warm afternoon and thank you for joining us. Now what you're watching here is not just a regular, regular show of how we do the weekly catch up on my zone, but it's a very interesting episode and it's something new. What you're watching now is called Straight Talk under the theme, Don't Raise Your Voice, Better Your Argument. What we're doing here today is we're having a live debate brought to you by my zone. Um, which comprises of varsity debaters as well as scholars just for your convenience. We're discussing, um, pol we're, we're discussing local matters that affect our communities and today our, our motion is this house supports greater military presence in Namibian communities including but not limited to Operation Kalahari Desert. Now we all know this was a trending topic so right here on my zone we are going to give you in-depth knowledge of what our speakers think of it so do stay tuned. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this house supports greater military presence in Namibian communities, including but not limited to Operation Kalahari. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when we look at Namibia and African societies in general, we look at uh, policies of uh, military intervention or military forces that aren't quite doing their job. We look at communities and societies that don't have faith within their military police and with, within the presence of them. They don't feel their presence and therefore they, dis, uh, they demoralize these particular groups and these particular organizations. We feel that there is a need and necessity for uh, military presence in Namibian communities and, and generally African communities to be held and to uh, be greater, the, uh, to enhanced, right? So ladies and gentlemen, let's quickly get into a definition. What do we we mean by military presence in this instance. We feel that military presence are operations or uh, operations that greatly enhance the accessibility of communities to the police and also that deter criminals from doing any crime in that particular society or, or within that particular community. Let's quickly get into characterization. Stakeholders. We have the citizens, the communities, and the police force. So let's quickly get into the citizens. We feel like right now the citizens lost faith in their military force because they feel like these people aren't doing their particular job and these people aren't upholding what they pledge to do. Secondly, we feel like they don't feel safe within their own particular countries because they feel like there is a lack of uh, police force or police strength in these communities. And then when we talk about the communities within themselves, they feel uh, there's crime ramping everywhere. And, uh, people are being killed, thievery is high and crime is just generally high within these communities and that's because people aren't deterred from doing crime. Now, when we also talk about police forces within themselves, they're not given the respect that they deserve. When we look at countries such as the USA, ladies and gentlemen, they even have a nickname for their police force, the men in blue. They feel so proud when they see these particular people coming up at a criminal uh, investigation to investigate or the criminal scene at the end of the day. But when we see Namibians, they feel demoralized and they feel like we're just wasting our money at the end of the day. Uh, rejected. Now when we talk about also, they're also demoralized to do their job because there's a lack of backup and there's a lack of incentive vision from the communities and societies within themselves. And we also look at the general happenings within our particular countries. We see poaching within Namibia is really high. Gangs are being created left and right, ladies and gentlemen. And we feel there are so many things, so many bad things that are happening within these countries because uh, people don't respect the law, people don't want to be within the borders of the law, and people don't feel the presence of these particular police forces and military Process. Let's quickly get into what matrix judges should be using to uh, determine who wins today's particular debate. First of all, you tell us uh, the person who wins today's debate is the one who shows you that this thing is particularly uh, morally acceptable. Secondly, ensures this person should be in, this team should ensure maximum protection of their citizens. And third of all, this person should reinstill faith within these particular forces within themselves. Now, let's quickly get into a few preemptive clashes. Now. A good team opposition might come up here within today's debate and tell us how this is a violation of the citizens' rights. First of all, we tell you that, ladies and gentlemen, police as it is, ladies and gentlemen, are not allowed to uh, violate the rights of, uh, their hum of their citizens and the people who they swore to protect at the end of the day. We also say that police within themselves have laws, regulations, and things to follow in order for them not to do those particular things in, in particular situations. But even further than that, punishment follows even after they decide to, to uh, ignore all those regulations and all those laws at the end of the day. And we feel that that is justified. Because just like a criminal stealing this, uh, and being put in jail, it's also this particular policeman is also being put in jail for committing a crime or violating the rights of this particular citizen. Yes. 
Don't you concede to the fact that in itself, military are just trying to kill and that can never really be taken away and they'll never truly be able to negotiate with the citizens? So, ladies and gentlemen, military, uh, that is, uh, that's a mischaracterization of what the military force are. The military force within themselves are people who are sworn to protect the country, ensure safety within the borders of the country, and also outside of the country. So, enemies of the government, enemies of the citizens are then dealt by, by the military force. We feel that when people don't then have faith in the military force, these people are unable to do their job properly because they feel they are unprotecting people who even believe in them in the first place. So, we feel that that's something that's greatly more important than that. Now. Even if uh, these people violate the rights at the end of the day, we feel that it's even justified because it ensures safety for everyone and it ensures maximum, uh, maximum fear of criminals and citizens engaging in amoral activities at the end of the day. Now, let's quickly talk about how, uh, yeah, let's quickly go into a few arguments within today's debate. I have two arguments for you, and that is deterrence and protection and also the moral standing that we have within today's particular debate. Yes? Um, do you feel that the military is a backup for the police? No, military is a different organization from the police organization. We feel that the military are people like such as the NDF, right? We have the police, we have uh, the Winduk, uh, yeah, like the Winduk uh, police or the Namibian police and those kind of things. The police are the ones who deal with crime within our communities. The military, they're also the ones who uh, they also deal with crime within our communities, but also protect and ensure safety within Point. the borders of the country. Let's quickly get into the truth. Okay, deterrence and protection. Why do we increase deterrence and protection in this instance? Because first of all, Police are actually doing their job and uh, catching criminals at the end of the day. Because when we look at Operation Kalahari, we see uh, we see police uh, policemen and police women alike within the streets, within the actual communities that they're supposed to be protecting, and they're actually catching the people within the, within the instance. When we don't have these operations, there's no incentive vision for these policemen and police women to actually go in the field and do, actually, and do their job at the end of the day. Secondly, we have police interventions become more frequent because these organizations or these operations, rather, ladies and gentlemen, are the ones that incentivize these people to do this. When there's no operation, and when there is no presence of this particular military force felt, ladies and gentlemen, and these people aren't able they don't have an incentive to go into that particular job. Thirdly, we feel that these police are seen in streets oftenly and this, are de this then deter criminals within themselves because they see the police every, uh, around every corner. So why is that important? That's important because first of all, citizens feel safe and then citizens are no, uh, in, in most of all, the citizens are more safe within their own particular country and the citizens and criminals are less likely to engage in immoral activities and therefore crim uh, crime as generally just goes down within this particular instance. We value a world with peace and safety of citizens and we value a world where we set a precedence of valuing the police and everybody working within the particular law. So what have I told you within today's debate? I've told you four important things. First of all, it's morally acceptable because you set a precedence of valuing the police and you ensure maximum protection of the citizens. You also allow and incentivize police women and men to go into the field and actually do their job and you also create a world where there's peace, safety of citizens and you also allow fear to be instilled, which is a bad thing within, within its uh, own form, but it's better at the end of the day. And with that, I rest my case. Mr. Speaker, in today's debate, we need to understand one thing. Why? The nature of military and what they stand for and what they do. So, first speaker proposition comes out telling us about no, we need to look at how the police actually. Yes. Police do follow the laws, but not military groups, right? Military groups are trained for one thing, and that is to kill. It's either you shoot me or I shoot you. That is how the game, they, that is the game that they play when they go to a right. But police actually trained in order for them to negotiate with criminals, and then, for example, like there's no police that actually can, can come and shoot you like that. First of all, they come and tell you, okay, mister, please raise up your hand. Mister, don't do those things. They just come and what? And then they shoot you. So, Mr. Speaker, today's debate is about this. What we need to look at the nature of military groups. Two, we need to look at the moral obligation of the military. Three, we need to look at the constitutional deployment of this military group, right? And my first point, the nature of military groups. Military groups are there to do one thing. They are there to fight other military groups. For example, like, for example, of other military groups, for example, like, what you call it, terrorism. Terrorists actually can be committed by the military because, like, they've got the right equipment in order for them to have to deal with terrorists by those police officers, right? Police officers are there to arrest, but soldiers are there to have to combat. Two, the moral obligation of military right. The military is trained in order for them to kill. They are not trained to negotiate. That's why even like that's why even like when the president comes up, they say that no, we do not negotiate with terrorists. That's why their military stands for. 
Taken. So don't you feel that within Africa or Namibia, there is a, a lack of police force or police women and men in the field? Ladies and gentlemen, this debate is not about the police. This debate is about the military presence and whether we support it or not. We, we do consider that police officers are not doing their job, but then as the plain soldiers within society is not the right thing to understand. Only a sick, only a sick government deploys soldiers to its unarmed citizens, to its unarmed citizen right. That's what I think we can understand as proposition. You do not send an armed man to go and negotiate, to go in the street where we got hundreds of hundreds and millions of what? And armed civilians. Namibia is a very peaceful country. We do not see things like terrorists happening in Namibia. That's why, like, why, what is the need of us having the military patrolling instead of them being in the, in the barrack right? The first thing, the second, third thing, the constitutional deployment of military. When and where should the military actually be what, deployed? They should be deployed only in the state of emergency. Someone like other countries want to invade Namibia. Only then should we deploy soldiers into the Swiss, right? We, do not, we cannot deploy soldiers no, no matter under what circumstances it is. That's why we've got city police, Nampol, and neighborhood watches. And at least maximum, the maximum force which can actually be used is reserve police. That's where it ends. That's the way the limit is. The, rather, than, rather than government deploying military soldiers into the streets, they can actually what, invest more in city police, Nampol, equip, equip them better in order for them to... Uh, order, okay, please stand. In order for them to... In order for them to better, better combat what, the crime right. Take um, the, the forces that you just named right now, do you feel like they're doing their jobs in the past 20 years that they've been employed? And do you feel like the, the army is not needed for that? Yes, we do feel that the army is not needed for this. One, <clears throat> police officers have not failed. City police have not failed. Right now, right now if someone's robbed, you call the city police, they usually, but usually find your phone, right? Someone like you're being robbed, you go to the police, open the case, you give them your, your tracking phone number, they track for your phone. But then you cannot go with your UC number to the to NDF, say, like, no, guys, track my phone. They'll be like, bro, are you, is, something, is everything okay with you? They know their job, understand. We need to know the moral obligation of the military and why they stand for. Military op operations actually what? They to kill and to fight when there's war. There is no one up in Namibia, so why should there be present? Why should there be military presence within Namibia? Okay, right now, let's, let me let me ask, let me ask you said opposition a question, right? When you watch CNN and then you see countries like Syria where there is soldiers on the street, what comes to your mind? You actually feel that no, they actually want suppression of what human rights, right? That's the thing that comes to your mind because, like those countries, you, you feel like there's no human rights there because what of the uniform that they're wearing? Understand? You ca you cannot deploy soldiers actually except your country to, to be peaceful and stable. Any more your eyes? Thank you. So, Mr. Speaker, we need to look at where these militia are being actually being deployed. Right? They are being deployed to quasi poor locations like Adutura. Why don't we see military presence also in places like in places like what? Clan Cooper them. Why, why don't we see this? Because like this actually what tactics by the government is what enough for them to suppress the poor the quasi poor people of Kadutura, right? They say that no, why are they, why, why are they only tackling what petty crimes and yeah, not white collar crimes? Reason being the why are they, why are they not what Tackling white, white, white collar crimes and, and just only petty crimes. Sir? Take uh, don't you think that the protection of civilians are actually at stake? Miss, miss, madam, 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 you do not, you do not come and tell me that the protection of civilians, if they just go the civilian right, how do you beat up someone and say that you are protecting them? There is, there is no sense in you saying that you are protecting me if you are being, if you are beating me for simply putting on an earring or you are, or you are beating me for simply what waking up at night. There is no protection in that. Rather actually violating my my what my right my right to self actualization. I got the right to put on earrings. You do not say like no boss. What's your name? My name is Oscar. You slap me. There is no thing that you should do. That, understand? Police officers don't beat you when they ask you question. They actually negotiate with you. But so just what we, what we what we saw what we saw in December was this. So just we deployed in the streets on New Year Eve. They were beating up people for just simply for example for simply gathering up. That was the switch we were doing. Okay, for the past years before, before the deployed soldiers, was, was, was there instance of white people being beaten on the streets? They were never. But after the deployed soldiers on the streets started happening, people were being beaten by the soldiers. And they were like, what did they call complain? Because you're being beaten by a person in uniform. Who you going to complain to? The people that actually are the ones wearing the uniform. Exactly. So we, do, we cannot allow... We can, we, can, we can always allow ourselves to be bullied by these guys wearing the green uniform, understand? Rather, let us support the guys in blue, but not the guys in green. The guys in green belong in the forest, because green stands for what? Bushes, trees, and everything like that. So, so that's where they should belong. Not, and let us have guys wearing the blue patrol the streets, right? That is why the police are there. So, Mr. Speaker, today's debate, you need to understand this. City police have not failed. Nampol have not failed. And even the maximum thing, which is... Reserve police, understand, have not failed. But why are we now investing in military forces? Why are we using maximum forces on armed civilians? Understand this. This, 
This is what this is what this okay and also also Max said proposing the question. Is it a coincidence that the government decided to do this before election year? And I said, actually think of that, then come ask me this question, right? So one thing we do this is this. In countries like Zimbabwe where my people are, are being countries like Zimbabwe are being said that Zimbabwe is a bad country because of what? The present of soldiers. Also like this, that's where that's where is where that is when I will be headed to if we keep on having these soldiers within these streets, right? Rather, let us get get, get the guys in blue. To do, let us invest in the guys in blue to do their job. Than us having the guys in green that do not think for themselves. That are being told, you no, know, just just going, just going beat and that, like like that. Understand? So we have to do this debate, Mr. Speaker. We told you this. We told you the nature of the military groups and what they stand for, the moral obligation of the military groups and the constitutional deployment of the military's right, and also how and also that the people that these people that they, and also why these people are actually targeting right. They're only targeting the quite poor people to infringe them and to infringe them. With that, Mr. Speaker, I'm, pro I'm proud to propose. So basically, we first need to understand and correct some mistakes that were brought forth by, by opening the by opening opposition, must to speak. Okay, so firstly, they basically come up here and tell us the military is trained to is trained to kill. Okay, we need to understand that when when we send this military out there in the street, we don't we do not send them out there to go kill. We send them out there with police officers so that they can be led by the police officers because the police officers know what what needs to be done. Okay, they don't go out there on their own, must to speak. Okay, that's the first thing, and then. And then we still, and then they still came up here tell, talking about what, and then they came up here talking about um, city police and the police was not doing the job. We need to understand that over the past few years, the crime rate has been very high. But since December last year, when this operation, when the operation on cross was, was introduced, okay, this was introduced because the high crime was rate. So the moment it was introduced, the crime rate declined, Mr. Speaker. Speaking from until today, Mr. Speaker, the crime rate declined, Mr. Speaker. So basically, what's that was, why opening government are basically saying they are against that, the fact that the government is there to help the people, okay? So, and then they also come up here, and then they also came up here talking about how people, how people are being slept because of, they are being asked their names. Look here, we are here debating facts, okay? What Oscar is talking about is the videos he sees on social media, the memes that people are making about NDF, Mr. Speaker, okay? Those things are not reality. We want reality facts. Did he ever see a video written live? Why do we not see those things on news about someone being, being asked, what's your what name? My name is Oscar, I will tell you later. My name is Oscar, and then you're being slept. We do not see these things because these are memes that are meant to, to do what? To, 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 black, to, to brainwash the people about NDF. Okay. Point? Yes. But don't you think those memes just become an expression of the interaction that people actually then have with the military? But then we, we all know reality. You cannot be slept by just being asked your name, okay? This is something we all know. And these are things that within, within the society we are, we know that things happen, okay? Just because, just latest, Sir? when the Itamina scored an on goal, okay? People made memes about him. We all know he didn't do that on purpose. So basically, memes are there to just make you look bad. Sir? Not now. Okay, and then they came up, and then they also had the issue of why should the NDF, why should the NDF be employed if the police officers say, look here, we cannot invest money, we cannot invest money in police, in police officers recruiting more while we have the NDF not doing anything, okay? We rather take them to the street with the police officers so they can help. That's why you don't see the NDFs alone there. There's the police officers leading them, guiding them, and telling them to do this. That's why the latest person that was killed by a soldier, the soldier is right now in prison. Why? Because the soldier was not was not given the green light by a police officer as to shoot the person, okay? He just shot in his own world. That's why he's in prison now. But the ones that are being led, the ones that are being guided by the police officers are the ones that are doing the right thing, okay? Point sir. And then, and then he came up here telling apparently NDF are not there to negotiate. NDF are not, so we are not supposed to negotiate with crimes, with criminals, I mean, okay? Criminals are there so we can take them away. How do you negotiate with a criminal? And what do you talk with a criminal? That's where bribing comes in after when you start negotiating with criminals. You're not supposed to negotiate with criminals. You're supposed to take them and lock them up, okay? Okay. So moving into moving into my argument, we basically moving into arguments why we want to um sir not now okay we basically want to clear we basically want to 
um, take away with this, all these petty crimes that we, that we basically see. We want to do away with them. We talked about patient killing, kidnapping, hijacking, um, drug dealers being, and then these gang fights, gang groups that Lotto already spoke about. Okay, we want to do away with these things. Okay, this is, this is a trend within society. This is a, things that are happening now in Namibia. Okay, we basically hear gang fights, people fighting just because of silly things. Okay, we basically hear drug, drug dealing cases being done on being done in the street. That's why the people are even um, demonstrating for some drugs to be legalized. It's because they feel like they are tired of doing things behind the scenes, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Okay, and then we also talk about how people kill each other, Mr. Speaker. But then we tell you that the moment we, been, the moment we put this NDF on the, on the, on the street, Mr. Speaker, these people then see a sense of fearness because they are afraid that they are, they are going to be killed. They are afraid they are going to be beaten up, Mr. Speaker. Okay, and these are things that we need to do. This is the way to go if we really want to reduce high crime rate. Okay, and then, and then we also have what? And then we also have. And then we also talk about the case of how these people then do what? How these people then tend to report as? To, how these people tend to report as to why? why they have been killed and all these type of things. These people never open cases, okay? All we hear them is we hear them on social media that yes, I was beaten, I was what what, but we never hear these people on, we never hear these people in the, in the, we never see these people on TV, these people never open cases as to, no, I was beaten. Why don't they open cases? It's because they know I was beaten because I was trying to resist arrest. I was beaten because I was trying to resist just me being searched. These are the type of things that we need to look into consideration. Not only start judging by judging and judging, okay? We first need to see what is the real picture, not the memes that Oscar is talking about. Okay, and then we also, and then we also continue off. What's wrong within our status quo? We then see that within our status quo, that's where people then do all these dirty things that I already mentioned earlier. And who's affected then with this high crime rate? It's firstly, it's the society. Okay, when we have this high crime rate, society is affected um, because we then see how people are not, how people are not freely moving within the zones. People are afraid to just go out, just to walk from here to One the side. opposite road. I'm not taking anyone. Just from here to the opposite road, people are free to do that because there are a lot of people there hunting individuals, Mr. Speaker. People are being killed for no reason. Okay, up to this case, they said they said this Avia that was killed, and up to now, no one is arrested, Mr. Speaker. Okay, these are things that we want to reduce. Recently, there was a, a guy that was killed in Comas Dam, Mr. Speaker. Up to now, we don't know who it is. But the moment we have the presence of the of the military force on the streets, these people then have uh, have these people are then afraid of, to do all these type of things. Okay. And then we also, we also talk about how investors then move away from the country when this high crime rate is very high, okay? These people need to understand that the moment we have, the moment we have um, a good country without, with low crime rate, investors come in to invest because they then see the potential for the country. But the moment we have a high crime rate, investors go because they see there's no succeeding, there's no thing of, there's no need to invest in that country because there's nothing coming out of the country. All we have in that country is thieves and people robbing and killing each other. Okay, we are not supposed, to, we are not supposed to be a country of killing and shooting and whatsoever. We are supposed to be a country of peaceful. Okay, so now the one question they might ask is. Why? From where are these resources coming from? We already told you that these people are already there, okay? These people are already there. All we need to do is just command them to go out there. All we need to do is advise them. That's why even within today's newspaper, you, you then hear that these people do not just come from their houses and go into the, into the streets. They, go, they first go through a briefing, okay? That briefing, thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Please allow me to start off with my rebuttals. So the first speaker came here and he said um, they apparently don't feel the military presence. So if you want to feel the military presence, I suggest you wait probably for Independence Day because their job is not to stay in the street. Um, uh, he also spoke about uh, the NDF or military itself not having anything to do and that they are rather taken in the streets so they can help control the they help the police to control the community or something like that i argue that if you want to limit crime employ more police officers rather than you bringing up um ndf to come help them up um the second speaker also uh, spoke about 
gang fights and robberies. If you want to reduce crime rate, please, I suggest you employ more police officers. Point, sir. Yeah. Sir, um, why is it amoral to instill faith within the citizens towards their police and the military? Excuse me? Why is it amoral for citizens uh, to reinstill the faith that citizens have within their police and military? Um, I'll try to answer that when I'm ending my speech. Um, ladies and gentlemen, when you have the military force on the streets, it also promotes a wrong image because, I mean, if when you, see, when you watch television, for instance, and you see um, an advert whereby these militaries that are working on the streets, I bet tourists will also be limited, limited to come to the country because they feel the country is at war whatsoever, and that will uh, lead to a downfall of the economy. Uh, when military is involved, uh, lives are lost, injuries are Your taken attitude. upon, and, hold on, and harassment of civilians. I mean, you find a person working in the night, and then you ask them, what are you doing? I'm above 18 years old. I have the right to be wherever I want in the night, as long as I'm not in any private property. Yes, sir. Okay, Elton, do you want to say the NDF's or the military's obligation is to go out there, celebrate independence and salute? And secondly, would you rather prefer NDF being on the street, clearing the crimes, or then have the crimes for the tourists to come so you can rob them? Um, I rather prefer NDF relaxing at the base and waiting for war, keeping fit. Um, government is, uh, number, uh, num second point is, GRN is already in, in shortage of resources, so it's going to be very hard or rather impossible to cater for the military on something they are not trained to do and it's not even included in their job description. Point, sir. Yes, sir. So if government doesn't have resources, where will they get the money to uh, employ new policemen? Why don't we just use the NDF that we have already? Um, NDF, it's not included in their job description. Probably they should just um, upgrade the police if you feel that the police are not doing their job or they are doing less of their job. Uh, militaries are for war situations, and Namibia isn't facing any war or war threats. <coughs> um, and you say that police, I mean, well, you wouldn't rather have the military, you wouldn't rather have the military, I mean, you would rather have the military help out the police. So can I ask you this question, would you send a doctor to clean savage papes? Elton. Okay, Elton, basically you're saying the job description of the military is to, the job description of the military is basically to protect the people. And us putting it on the streets or in the presence of the people, it's to protect the people by clearing the criminals. Job description indicates to protect the people from war or war threats, not from, uh, not from criminals that are within the border, I guess. Um, with that, I rest my case. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, speakers at large. My name is Catherine. So I would like to get into my debate today. One thing we should actually notice is that with this Kalahari Desert uh, operation, it has actually been a major su success uh, uh, seeing from what Horncrantz has actually done. So with that, I would like to actually start with my rebuttals. Um, first of all, I would like to start with the first speaker from opening up. Uh, he came here talking about that the military force is trained to have no emotions. Yes, they are trained to have no emotion, but 
with the Namibian force, they should understand that these people are just laying at the base, not doing anything with, you know, <laughs> yeah, what happened, the whole incident that went on social media. We are trying to prevent such stuff. So basically, what we are trying to say is that the military does not really work alone. They actually work with the police force to actually ensure that crime rate is pretty much reduced. No, Oscar, I'm not going to take your POIs. Um, he also came up here saying that the military does not negotiate. Of course they don't negotiate. I mean, come on, they are literally trained to kill. But in this case, they work with the police force not to kill these people, just to reduce the crime rate. Um, the second speaker also came up here talking about job description, that the, um, uh, the, the, the NDF's job description is not to fight crime. It is just to fight the war. But basically what we are trying to tell you as side proposition is that we are trying to reduce the, uh, the crime rate in our country, seeing that it has been very high, and to also um, see that the police force actually uh, gets to see their job well in what the NDF is doing. Uh, with that, I would really like, oh, oh yeah, 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 he also talked about the tourists will feel afraid to come to the country based on them seeing the military forces in our country. Actually, would you rather side prop have a country high rate crime, tourists coming in, getting robbed, getting killed, and then the economy falls, and then what, what, what's next? That is my question based on this speaker who's ever coming to talk. Okay, yeah. Anyway, um, with that being said, I would actually like to move on with my case. No, oh, Oscar, no. I'm not going to take your uh, 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 POIs. Wait. Um, I would like to base my arguments on, uh, on three facts. The crime, reduction rate, the crime rate reduction, the police have failed, and the NDF is the, bet, uh, the next better option to help the police fight crime. So with that, I would really like to get into my case. Um, soldiers have been trained to deal with the situation that uh, if something is like happening in front of them, they are not going to stand back and ignore what's actually happening. Like maybe they see somebody else um, breaking into a house yeah. or something. They're actually trained to stop such crimes and to see that they do not kill this individual, instead instill fear into this type of person that is actually committing this crime. Yes, taken. Um, you spoke that the military do not have anything to do. Does that then become a justifiable reason as to why we should then arm them against civilians? Yes, because in this case, when these people are actually armed, criminals are actually armed uh, everywhere they go. So with what actually happened was that with Hornkrantz, people actually saw that many, many weapons were confiscated by just them uh, operating in the streets and them uh, bringing out, you know, okay, wait, <laughs> um, right. Uh, moving on, uh, the police were also trained to um, fight crime, sorry, to fight crime, but the NDF has been doing a better job at it, seeing that the stats have actually grown from 20 years back up to now, plus looking uh, forward to Vision 2030, we are trying to have a safe haven for Namibia, Namibia's uh, local community, Namibia's economic community, and Namibia's tourism uh, community. Um, with that also, I would like to go and say that... Um Just one, Kathy. Okay. Don't you think that it is better to equip the police than have zombies in the streets? Like I said, guys, the police have not really been fighting crime more than the NDF has. St uh, 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 let, me take let me quickly take you back to Hornkrantz with the status that actually happened. We had a lot of rape cases that were not reported, but with Operation Horncrunch, we had 87, uh, 87 rape cases reported. We had 63 fraud cases. We had 288 assault cases with the intent of grievous body, bodily harms, meaning that no, ma no, sir, I mean. Okay, so with that, I would actually like to continue without any disturbances from 
Oscar. Okay, um, moving on to my second point is that the police force have actually failed to use their mandate as to meaning that they actually failed to use uh, their sole purpose of fighting crime in the Namibian community, seeing that as to how this, um, how this um, NDF people have fought, they actually made a very, very updated, um, excuse me, they actually increased the, I mean, they actually reduced the crime rate that has been happening all over Namibia, not only in places such as the informal settlements where it mostly just actually happens, but also within the town and other regions as well. Um, moving on to my second point is that the, 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 the police are also spread thinly, so the force is not able to fight crime successfully. Um, with that, I'd also like to mention my third point, where is my partner is coming to explain further into detail. So the NDF, uh, sorry. Well, okay, yes, the, the, the NDF has a different, um, sorry. Yes, my third, third point was that the NDF is the next better option to help the police fight crime. So they actually have the different court to answer to and corruption likely does not affect them. With that, I'd really like to rest my case. Thank you. Panel, we do not compromise on the right to life. To an extent where a life has already been lost, we feel that you should then end the military presence in society, right? So what exactly is our solution or why do we differ from everyone in today's debate? We necessarily support an operation, right? We just don't believe that that operation should then include the presence of the military. We support the idea that you have police officers within that operation and that operation then actually has like patrolling, that, uh, that, that operation then actually like goes into society to make sure that civilians are safe, which is basically the problem Problem that the proposition has because like pro because police officers are inefficient right we feel that we can still create that efficiency within our side today by just having more patrolling and at the end of the day actually having those police officers in society doing their jobs at their stations right that increases the efficiency and that is enough in itself already a good reason to get all the benefits that we then hear from side proposition right so what exactly do we hear we hear that one it's a major success first response to this right is that we do not necessarily have to tell civilians for them to choose because now it's you're putting civilians in a, in a position where they either have to choose violence from society, Michael. like criminals in society, or violence from the military. We feel that is a very unfair position to then put civilians in, and they should not be then making that choice. Whereas in, in our world, we actually then have an efficient police force, which is actually then patrolling and actually having this operation without the military presence, that it can still be a benefit that we can have, right? But then also, what we then hear is this whole idea of deter, uh, deterrence and protection from uh, OG, right? We then further tell you that deterrence doesn't have to, have, uh, to happen at the expense of necessarily human life, we, feel, we, we, we also feel at the end of the day, so the same thing is then also e equivalent to the re reduction in crime. A reduction in crime doesn't only occur when yeah, you have a military presence within society. Having an efficient police force at the end of the day can already then uh, maximize the idea that you're actually going to reduce crime, right? But then also at the end of the day, we hear this whole idea as to how um, it's, it's a justifiable reason just because military don't have anything to do, right? We don't necessarily think that people, because people don't have anything to do, which is then put them in society for them to kill people, right? That in itself doesn't become a justifiable reason, we're going to need more analysis as to why that in itself uh, should then be the reason we actually then uh, have the, uh, the military in society, right? But then also we just tell you that there's kind of like no accountability. For example, you see like when someone just died right now at the expense of the military, yes, someone was arrested, but we never even got like a letter from the government telling us that, hey, um, we are really sorry for this life that was lost at the end of the day, and that in itself means that there's no accountability, but it means that you start compromising on many rights, right? But let me go into my case now. So what does Oscar told you? 
Let's go tell you about the, the nature of military, as to how they're not trained to work with civilians, as to how they're brutal, whatsoever, right? Here we come to our extension on this point, right? We feel that you, one, civilian lives are lost. But secondly, it means that you start to compromise on many rights. It means that like when someone's life is already lost, it means that you actually then create like an atmosphere where we just don't respect human rights and we feel that it's very uh, a violation of a government mandate, which is actually then to protect uh, the, the rights of people, right? But then also, as to why is our solution best in today's debate? Our solution is best in today's debate because police officers actually know how to negotiate necessarily with criminals. And negotiating with criminals is not necessarily you letting the criminal go. It's just that you know exactly what the type of procedure to do before you arrest that criminal instead of you just shooting at someone who just made a U-turn, right? That in itself is something that we value in today's debate. But then okay. also another idea, right, is this whole idea as to how we, uh, more patrolling and like all efficient police force could actually reduce crime and give us all the benefits that we hear from uh, the proposition, right? And what is the importance of this? The importance of this is that you have a safe society, but it means that like it's not, a, it's not at the expense of human, uh, human life and there's no violation of government mandate that actually then occurs, right? It means that like you actually have a safe society, but civilians do not have to choose whether Point they sir. value the uh, whether they value uh, violence from society criminals or violence from police officers, right? Point but sir. also another extension that we have, right? is that we need to look at the how, the how, uh, how dangerous it is to actually have military presence in times of like elections. It means that like you actually send a message out there, an intimidating tactic, it means that there's fear among people when they have to elect and there's literally a military in the streets. It means that they are most likely Point going sir. to vote for, vote for that government based on the idea that they actually don't want any violence upon them, right? That is very harmful. We need proposition to come and engage with that. But then also another idea as to how it interferes with democracy. It means that people are not able to make choices Michael. at the end of the day, which is based on uh, how they actually feel because of this intimidation tactic that then occurs, right? And this is the, an example of this is what happened in the DRC as to how necessarily you just having the military there was very dangerous for the, uh, for, for the process of democracy within that country, right? Quickly. So don't you think that with the trend in crime within Namibia, we need all the help we can get and even uh, to... Uh, we, uh, even if it means violating the citizens' rights? No, we don't think that, right? We feel like once you have an efficient police force, you can just reduce that crime and have it analyzed as to how necessarily an efficient police force can reduce that crime. We don't necessarily think that you're violating the rights of people at the end of the day then becomes a, a, a leeway for you to then reduce crime, right? We don't feel like citizens have to choose between the two. But also, we have to understand one thing, right? Why is the right to life very valuable in today's debate? The right to life is very valuable because every certain uh, every, every human being de uh, deserves to, uh, to live a, a dignified uh, dignified life, right? We feel that you necessarily having then the police, uh, the military presence in society, you then go against this principle and you take away this right to life at the end of the day and the, dig uh, and the dignified way that people are actually supposed to die. For example, as to how the person that just died, in uh, the cab driver that just died um, Point, in, the, in the past few days, right? That then tells us you remove that process of dignity and we don't necessarily think that is a good thing, right? So why exactly should we win today's debate? Because we've proven to you as to how necessarily we can still achieve all the benefits that that proposition speaks about, but we've also proven to you as to how necessarily uh, uh, how uh, the, the presence of uh, military intervention or military presence in society is very dangerous to the process of democracy. Quickly. So how many lives and how many cases exactly of rights were uh, um, taken advantage of since Hong Kong? Exactly um, it, it, it's exactly one life, right? But just because it's one life, it just means that it actually then sets a trend. It means that like you actually then create a trend where military people can then continue doing this because in their nature they are very violent. As to how we've already seen in this debate is that we've already got an idea that they naturally can't negotiate with people. So it just means that like you're just creating a leeway for them to actually harm more people and there's no certain level of accountability. That is necessarily a very harmful thing. You should engage with that, right? But we've proven during today's debate as to why military presence is very harmful in society and that proposition is to come prove to us that no, necessarily all their benefits are only exclusive to you having a military in society. We don't think that those benefits are exclusive, but moreover, we've proven to you as to how we can achieve everything that they still, uh, they still want to achieve. And also, lastly, we've proven to you as to how uh, citizens do not have to choose necessarily between which violence they want, if it's violence from the military or whether it's violence from uh, the society. And with that, we beg to oppose. So before I sp start with my speech, um, JFK once said that every generation deserves, uh, every, gener every generation gets the criminals it deserves. So one question I want to ask everyone, the Facebook people, everyone here in the room, what kind of criminals do we deserve as a nation? What kind of criminals should be led to run around and intimidate us? So the opposition today basically tried to build a picture, right, that 
the police have not failed, that the NDF are basically a group of renegades trained to kill people. And I asked even the question, how many people have died since 2018 when Hong Kong was uh, put about? He even answered it himself, one. One. And if I ask the question right now, how many people have been killed by the police ever since the police have been put into this, into this country? How many lives have been lost by them? And it's funny that you, you're going to try to build a picture that the NDF are just trained people to kill people and all that. When you ask the question that how many people do you engage with that are actually in the NDF? Are they people that are trying to kill people? Sir? Are you guys living in a bubble where you do not see crime going up ever since, the, ever since this whole time? Or have you not seen that the army has not been trained to actually do the job that the police have been failing ever since independence? So. Say? Let me jump into a few rebuttals. So the first half of the debate basically spoke about the nature of the army. You know, they spoke about how the police have not failed, right? And how the NDF is being inactive and that you prove that why the NDF should be needed to, 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 to stop crime and all these things. i ask you the question. Are you living in a bubble where do you think crime is not going up? Have you never been robbed before? Sir. Have you ever felt like you're not safe? Because if you feel like the police have done their jobs in the past years, then, then this operation should not be needed. Sir? Then it would have been justified. When it came in the, about in the, first, in the beginning of 2018, uh, the end of 2018, why were the people not revolting against this thing? Because crime was a problem. We were a nation being suffered because the, the criminals in our country were not afraid of the police anymore. The people did not feel safe in their homes anymore. Alex. It got to that point. I'll take you later. Sir. The second half of the debate, they spoke about compromise to life. Let's talk about compromise to security. Do, do, do Namibians feel safe in their own homes before home crimes happen? Do Namibians feel safe? Were Sir. they really feeling safe? Or is it happening only now that you feel that if you criminals go out there, they have a deterrent, there is something out there to stop them, to make them think twice before committing a crime? So, um, yes. Prove to us why are your benefits only exclusive to having the military there? I will come there. I will come there because, we listen, support. sir, let me give you the hard truth. Let me give you the hard okay. truth. The police have failed. The police have failed. Ever since they've been there, crime has not gone down. It's been going only one way. Up, 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 up. Except for a few cases where it's gone down in some towns. But the NDF has brought a solution. It, not, it might not be perfect. Yes, and we agree with that. It's not perfect. But Hong Kong's reduced crime. Kalahari is helping to, to, to better the situation you, for Alex. us going into the, next level, um, into the next phase of our independence. Because we want a country that we do not have to feel fear. The police is going to get better. Yes, we do agree with that. But the criminals have gotten to such a point where they have weapons, they have guns. You can go to a show now and you can find half of the teenagers in that show are having knives. And yes, they're going to claim that it's for self-protection. But since when did self-protection come to a point where you have to walk around with knives, ladies and gentlemen? Where people can walk around, where I can walk around with a knife and say it's self-protection. Well, I know in my heart that I'm going to rob someone. That you're telling me that the, 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 the police are equipped for that. Well, they're negotiating with these people. There is corruption in the, in the police. And it has been proven. <clears throat> One sec. Yes, Oscar. Why are the soldiers only infringing the Kwasi Empire and Kadutura? Why don't they go to the government and actually root out white corruption? The so white let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you a story, right? Let me, tell you, let me give you a status quo of what's happening, right? So in South Africa, right? South Africa is considered one of, the, one, of the, one of the best armies in Southern Africa, if not the best. You know a strange thing is why South Africa hasn't deployed their own army into their own streets? Because Sir? they have something else that is better than their army. Private security companies. Now. Private security companies in South Africa are so good. They Sir? are so good that in the rich neighborhoods and what do you call it, middle class neighborhoods, crime is so low there, except for in the informal areas, right? Do informal areas, do you, in, our, in our country, do informal areas have the same protection from the police Sir? as in South Africa they're from, from private companies? They have to pay for their own protection. For them to feel safe, they have to pay G4S and all these uh, red skirts and scorpion and all these things. In Namibia, do we have such security companies Sir? that can actually do the job like that? But if we have the police, right? The police that has been there for always, ever since I can remember the police has been there. But do I feel like the police has ever helped me personally to stop crime? Or help Sir? anyone else personally to stop crime, basically? No! The police has always been there. It's just these guys who have just been there to help when they can. If you, an emergency happens, then they are there. But do they like legitimately deter crime? No, they do not. They have failed in that. So what have we, uh, as closing uh, government, we brought to this case, right? So we brought three points. The crime has gone down. We've proven that the crime has gone down. Why? We've even given a good analysis. The soldiers, right? Sir. Even though 
it's 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 not it's not something that we said that the government wanted to happen where violence was happening on the streets no Points but up. it worked the point is that it worked but the government is still gonna it's still holding these people responsible it's not that the whole operation was a failure because some people went across the line some people crossed the border they went so? they, 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 they did something wrong a few bad apples that are being held responsible for the whole operation cannot be held for the whole operation those people are being held responsible but the operation was a success crime has gone down so? i'll take you soon uh the police being trained to 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 do oh okay the police being trained to um, catch criminals does not de does not help them deter them that's what we also prove the opposition here has not given us a, a, a proper solution to this problem we have already a solution it's been working and it's been getting better right well we spoke about how the police have failed because the police, every time they've mentioned that thing of saying negotiate with criminals right negotiate with criminals it's just bribes it's just gangs being made it's just police being lenient that's why crime has gone through the roof because criminals now they're just thinking like police are is a laughing stock and the police don't want to do that job because it feels like they can they can go into the streets of havana or anywhere in the form of instead of it and they feel like they're outgunned they're out oh my god it's, it's it's crazy out there um the last point that i was supposed to come extend on was the ndf being the next uh force right so the ndf are the better option because they do not first of all they do not answer the same to the same courts as the police they have different powers to the police right second the army can deter crime better than the police yes even though the police are there to to, to combat crime and to to, to to solve crimes and to deter crime they do not do it they even have a backlog Thank you. One would first like to state that there was no engagement on our solution. Because one, we tell you that the police were inefficient because of lack of funding. Two, the NDF receives seven billion dollars every year from government. The police does not receive the same amount. If you take the same money, give it to the same police, you create the same effect. But this is why we do not want the NDF, and we've stated it before. We want the operation led by the police, with the police patrolling. And that is what they said in the beginning of their debate. They have lost faith in the police because they have not had a proactive police force in our society, in the field, protecting the people, preventing the crime. Once we do that, we get the same benefits on this side of the house. And that is what we're advocating for. We do not want to compromise the safety. We do not want to compromise the safety of our people because now they have to choose. Do I choose brutality from the NDF or I choose brutality from criminals? They shouldn't have to choose their safety and any of their uh, body harm should not be based on who provides it, but it should be done away with POI, sir. itself. I will not take POIs now. But furthermore, this is why um, I will make an attempt to show you that people actually do fear the police. One, if you put these people on the streets, you create the same safety that is created within the U.S. and within every other society. Because one, people fear those people wearing those blue attires. One, they fear going to prison. Three, they fear being in a prison and being arrested by these guys. POI, sir. I will not take one now. But furthermore, let me talk about the rights of our citizens. They tell us furthermore that our citizens, uh, um, that it's fine for a person to be killed. It is fine for a person to be slapped. It is fine for a person to be brutally handled. It is fine for a child to be manhandled. Because one, if I provide safety, treat this guy uh, um, in the worst way possible, I may create some sort of deterrence for another guy uh, not to be in the same situation again. That should not be the case. Because one, not only have they failed morally, but they have failed us as a government. Because they take the, away the very safety that they're, taking, that they're trying to provide. Because then you take away the safety that you're trying to provide against criminals, but then you create the problem yourself. That should not be the case in our society. But furthermore, this is why, as a government, 
They should do away with all this military situation. Because when I have a contract with my government that clearly states that I pay my tax and you provide me with the best safety possible, but not safety that will give me harm in uh, return. I provide absolute safety in all ways possible. Then furthermore, he told me, and that directly Peter. explains as well, that there's no accountability in our government when it comes to this military forces. But furthermore, I would like to state that we shouldn't create deterrence against NDF people hurting our people and create deterrence against criminals hurting our people. Many... We should create deterrence against only criminals hurting our people. Because one, if they say that now you create deterrence for a police officer, not a police, for a military uh, um, soldier not to beat me, and then you create more problems and no, then you have to brave. create more solutions, meaning more resources are going to be used by a government in order to solve these problems. But furthermore, we move on to uh, um, elections, and I'll come to the nature of our police officers and all of those guys later. In our Before NDF you move guys. On. Not now. Now we speak about elections. Michael stated clearly that in a time of elections, when you put these people out there, these people are going to, now that they're being manhandled, they're being ill-treated, they're being brutally handled, it creates some sort of precedent saying that if I do not believe in this government, in this ruling party, if I do not vote for this party, this may happen to me. You create some sort of fear in these people, you instill some sort of fear that will make them uh, um, vote in fear of what is going to happen if they do not vote for that party. You may, people may also not go to elections at all because they fear what will happen in a crowded place like that. And that is what happened in DRC. People fear being outside of their homes, being away from their place of safety, which is now our problem. But furthermore, now let me characterize our, uh, um, our what do you call it, our NDF people, our police, our hey, citizens. Sir as well as uh, um, the problem that we're trying to solve, taken. So, one, where will the uh, resources come from to make the police as fearful as the NDF? And secondly, are Stop. you aware... I only take that one question. This is what I'd like to tell you, and this is why I stated it in the beginning. The same resources you're using to deploy these military soldiers are the same resources you're going to use to deploy those police officers. Two, and... If you want to create this whole situation about the NDF, there is no national threat, there is no threat to our national security, so there is no need Point, for these people to be out there. I won't take POIs anymore. Furthermore, in case or in an event where our country does receive that threat, you take away the readiness of these people to be able to fight a war or fight of that threat. Because now their new aim is not to kill, but their new aim is to be able to interact with the, 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 the counterparts. The new aim is no longer to do away with the problem, but the new aim is now to entertain, uh, not entertain, but rather uh, um, it takes away from how they react to the problem as well. So it takes away their readiness towards that problem. And it's exactly what we do not want within today's debate. So we have showed you exactly uh, um, five things in today's debate. One, our solution, why we believe in the operation and being led by the police and how that solution and uh, uh, um, re redirecting the funds from the military rather to the police to better enable them to fight and prevent the crimes proactively as the military has done. Furthermore, we tell you that we should not compromise on citizens' rights. Furthermore, we told you about the accountability of our government within today's debate. We tell you about our elections as well, Mr. Speaker, and we tell you about how the NDF, they aim, their nature, and everything. And this is how I want to end today's debate. The debate is not about supporting violence, but the debate is about achieving safety and the best way to do it. And we tell you now, once that we best achieve safety on this side of the house, where you both ensure the safety of the citizens and do away with the crime. With that, Mr. Speaker, I thank you. We have come to the end of that.
We've come to the end of that very informative debate. I have learned quite a couple of things, including that if you see it on a meme, it might not actually be true because why aren't these people on TV, right? Yeah, yeah. So right after this, we're going to have the adjudicators come up and give us feedback as to who they believe took this debate for them. We have some capable speakers in the house, and I must say I was quite impressed. But in the, ta in the meantime, as our adjudicators make their deliberations, do enjoy this video of our NMH Media Camp. story as a journalist unless you write an opinion piece. Uh, otherwise it becomes very laborious if you are just quoting it on, 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 on uh, paper. So I decided to put it on top just to clear the fact that these two are not related. First picture, second picture, and on the side we have the infographic. Picture underneath because we can't sort the place first and then come to the story because we went like who is this and what. First of all, we had to find out about this part was empty, so we had to improvise. And so we cut, we cut from, from the um, career magazine, and so we created this. We completed it before. And this is what we want to do for our readers. So, how was the day? You guys enjoyed it? Yeah. Yes. You're learning a lot? Yes. yes. Okay. So, just, so, just from a standpoint point of view, the reason why media is so important um, for us, it, it's a very, media for us is what makes us a break us as a brand. So, it's important that we have really close relationship with you guys. You are the future journalist and, and editor and everything. So it's really important for us to have a good relationship with the media in terms of brand. Okay. Say if your brand is established in the media, it's, it's, a, it's a reputational thing that you have to really work over time to build and to, to change the perception into a positive part. That's what we are. We do everything what we can do to have a better, well-established relationship with the media. It's actually amazing that you all came to the realization about how powerful media is. It shapes our thinking. What we expose ourselves to every day influences the way we think and ultimately also the way we behave. How are we going to have fun with our editors or our interns? <laughs> interns, interns, interns. <laughs> How are we going to have fun with our interns? And we thought, why don't we play the game? Oh, to begin, is the intern from... Is the intern from... We World Wide and that is LB. So he's the first contender. Yes. 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 And time starts now. Okay, clue number one. It's a popular delicacy in Bentu. It's a Namibian version of barbecue. And oh, no. it's a yeah. Um, It's the annual oh. where you give the award to the musicians. Okay. Yes. okay. The capital town of that region is Boshana. Uh, Boshana? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
deixe que tem. that very heated debate, I for sure as hell could feel the heat in this winter even. How about you, Donald? I could feel it very much. I mean, like, all the arguments that came above were just too much. Like, mm -hmm. as a judge, I didn't know which way to go. Right, so if you still don't know who's standing next to me, this is Donald. He was one of the adjudicators for today's debate, and he's here to give us feedback. So I'm just way too enthusiastic and too excited to find out how it went. So I won't even say anything more. Donald, please. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm not going to give the rankings. I'm going to give the rankings last, just to make sure that each and every one of you guys are having a side of anxiety in you. Mm -hmm. So basically what this whole debate was all about is that who best deters crime and which way should we go? What we get from opposite, uh, what we get from opening government is they tell us that no, the NDF can best deter crime even at the cost of what is going to happen with the people, the violation of rights, and so on. And this is justified because of the fact that we are going to deter crime. Um, what we get initially from this side of the house is that no, we do not want NDF or anyone, uh, NDF or anyone that can harm the safety of civilians to deter crime. We want the police to deter crime. Initially, the rankings are as follows, and I'm going to explain why each, ev each and every team ranked above the, the other, right? Um, so we have in fourth place, we have closing government. In third place, we have opening opposition. In second place, we have opening government and in first place we have um, CO which is closing opposition. 
The reason we have CG ranking or OO ranking above CG is because we did not get as much matter from the closing opposition, uh, closing government, which said that they did not have any extension. What they did was they did a rehash of what opening government said, and they didn't even analyze it. Therefore, we placed OO above them. Why OO was not placed above OG is because we have this clear characterization as to what is happening or the, in terms of the nature of NDF, in terms of explanation, and in terms of policy as to what they want to do, which initially comes from um, opening government's prime minister, the prime minister speaker, which is the first speaker. So he further tells us that um, we want to, he further has this plan. Let me quickly just go through the notes because. Right, right. Okay. So what we hear from opening government prime minister is that military is doing their job or what, m the, what the military is doing good in terms of them deterring crime. Deterrence of crime is very important because um, even at the expense of civilians feeling unsafe in the city or whatsoever. Why we placed o OG, uh, OO, um, Closing, closing opposition above them is that they further tell us that no, anything that they want to achieve throughout this whole debate, which is deterrence of crime, can be achieved by any source of police force. They further go on and tell us that no, this can be achieved. What we only thing that we need to do is that we need to just cut the budget of NDF if they are not doing much and place it into getting an effective police force that then does everything that needs to be done in terms of deterring crime. They can patrol the streets, they can do everything that um, the NDF is doing. The only benefit of this is they will be trained in a way that they will not harm the rights of citizens. And the rights to citizens is important because they need to feel safe in the country that they live in. Very important argument that comes with, their, with them as well is that they say that no, the citizens are shifting from fearing criminals to fearing the NDF. So self-actualization is not af, um, achieved in this regard, which is something that we get from the opening speaker of the um, closing opposition, which is why they are ranked above this. So those are the rankings. You guys can come for to each and any one of the judges, except for me, for personal feedback. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Donald, for that very in-depth um, explanation as to why you ranked closing government in the first position. And thank you to all the speakers that came through today. Y'all did a phenomenal job. And most especially, thank you for watching. I know it's sad that we have to end the stream here. It was fun for all of us. It was, it was good while it lasted. So leave your comments, you know, in... Leave some comments, tell us how you found the debate, add some arguments of your own. We might just engage those ones. And of course, do stay tuned on our Facebook page for more updates, more information as we keep you informed. So until next time, it's Straight Talk.